hear I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so to say. Every land has its assassins. Some are simply more open about their business than others. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? <laughs> you have me there, indeed. I, for one, can make no... Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo fruits of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits. Packed in like crust them to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship, fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a handsome Grey Warden? A man who then spares my life. I could not. Hmm, perhaps that was a poor choice of words. Uh, true, though it is. Do you object? Uh, I'm not sure that that's the route I would take. Were I to continue old habits, but as you wish. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. I know little enough of the daily, other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter, and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease, and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All is tale in the book. Is it? It seemed normal enough a tale, boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. It brought a good price, so I hear. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse of the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. Are we so different, you and I? Buffeted by the winds of fate, brought to this point by both circumstance and excellence. Oh, you are too kind. My original point is that my mother's daylation for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. <laughs> oh, there has been plenty. 
To tell the truth, it is because I expected nothing more. Still, even I eventually thought that it would be better for me if I ran off to join the famous Dalish when one of their clans drew near Antiva City. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy. It's such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why did he do that? I guess you could be right. We never really talked the way I left. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd heard this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. Huh. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. I don't know. I'm honored. Thanks again. The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's idiot it is at that. But I know he would want his work carried on, his pledge fulfilled. My family well past a bit checkered, to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Hard to say. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Our family's only crime blight. We're not ashamed of that. Duncan wanted to reclaim the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak, and perhaps we'll uncover evidence to restore my family's honor along the way. Nobody's been to Soldier's Peak since the Grey Wardens were banished, but I found a way. They say it's haunted, and it's certainly dangerous. Will you help me? Darkspawn. And Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak. But he never had the chance. Concentrate. Like we practiced. Now, fire! these apprentices to Redcliffe. The first enchanter says you need every able-bodied mage for the war. They're young, but capable enough, as you saw. Uh, you'll have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people traveling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now what do I do? Oh, no, 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 I sent my elf to do that. I mean, I sent my helper, Taran. Nice fellow, that, Taran. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant...